Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, August 29th. Hopefully, everyone had a great weekend. Anyways, taking a look at the morning charts this morning, we've got um, we've got some interesting price action, I think, going to unfold this week. And if we're looking at the U.S. dollar index here, this is the four-hour chart. Um, usually, look at it at the one hour, but uh, this pattern is starting to get a little larger, so I wanted to zoom out to a larger time frame to uh, encompass the whole thing here. But overall, we've had the uh, previous trend, which was down. We've had this kind of rolling band here of prices that have been kind of heading lower. And eventually we got to this spot where we saw the, the US dollar come up to a key resistance zone, which it pierced once, tested twice more, and then from there we saw it break down and then it tested the, it came back, tested the breakdown zone. Right now we've just been trading down at the support area and the US dollar has been holding up but it looks fairly weak and this morning we've seen it continue to move down and it's pushing down on this uh, support zone it is kind of eating through there. If we do see it give way this morning or this week then we're going to see equities uh, have a pretty nice run to the upside I think. If we just zoom out on this chart to get a better feel for where the next stop is, the next stop for the US dollar index safe zone would be 73 which is in the middle of the previous uh, bottom that we put in so we are trading right here right now so there's a pretty good drop there's about a half a cent just over half a cent drop there and that could take place uh, within really only a, a trading session or so so it's it's not far from hitting that level and of course if we get this drop then we're probably going to see equities the SP 500 break through the 1200 area and and start to work its way for uh, another bounce. Now let's just take a look at what the the weakening uh, dollar has done to some commodities. Here's the crude oil chart. We can see today this is the daily chart. Today we've had a little bit of a pop. It's trading up at resistance, some, some previous highs here from a couple of days ago, and then there's also this little cluster up here um, from last week or two weeks ago. So it is still trading up at resistance, but uh, the weakening dollar has uh, helped push oil up a little bit this morning. Looking at the gold chart, this is the four-hour chart of gold. We had that big sell-off, put in some, uh, some tweezers bottom here, and then it's had a nice little bounce, but it's come right back up to the key resistance zone I pointed out yesterday, or sorry, last week, and it's right into this previous top and this previous low in this little bounce here. So we're, we're trading right at a major resistance zone, uh, trading at the 50 period moving average. And overall the chart on a short term basis, let me just uh, zoom into a 60 minute chart. On a short term basis, it still looks relatively bullish here, but uh, it's just kind of hanging on by a thread and we'll have to see if it can actually have another push higher. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it actually push a little bit higher, higher and just pierce this previous high at uh, 1858, 1856 area. And I could see it just piercing that and then sharply uh, selling right back down. And, and then from there, I think it might form a little bit more of a bearish pattern. So just to quickly uh, sketch that in here, we could see it go up. And it, once it breaks this previous high over here, we'll probably see it some good short covering and you'll see a quick little spike to the upside and then we'll see if big sharp selling comes back in pulls it down and from there you kind of form this little bit of a, uh, a bear flag and then it'll actually form a mini head and shoulders if we do get this strong selling to the downside we'll probably just see a sideways pause here could drift up a little bit and uh, and then we could see actually another waterfall down to test this low and most likely pierce it and go a little bit lower still. So that's kind of where I stand right now on gold. We have had a pretty good pullback. I do feel as though gold is still in the long-term bull market, but I do think it's topped out intermediate uh, for uh, probably a month or three anyway. So we'll just see how that plays out going forward here in the next few hours, our next couple trading sessions. Here we've got the silver chart. It uh, it got stepped on really hard there last week also. It's kind of bouncing up with a little bit of a bearish price action too. And um, silver overall I think is it's, it started its big uh, intermediate pullback a long time ago. It's in this great big range trading right in the middle of it. Um, very awkward chart pattern. And I don't really see any good setups. It could go either way. And uh, I'm just going to steer clear of that right now. <clears throat> Now taking a quick look at uh, at bonds here, here's the bond futures, 
This is the daily chart, and we've seen it really explode to the upside. And I, looking at the chart, it's starting to look very toppy, and I have a feeling we could see bonds start to correct. So we're starting to get this little mini head and shoulders pattern here. And this little type of little bounce here, the price action intraday, is uh, starting to look a little bit bearish. And there's some good downside here on on bonds to fall uh, pretty easily down to uh, the 129 area. And then it could actually um, top out and go quite a bit lower from there. So maybe looking to enter a TBT, an inverse bond fund today or this week. Uh, meaning that as bonds fall and money comes out of the safe haven bonds and moves into equities, we're going to see bonds fall, but the TBT fund that we buy is inverse, meaning it will actually go up. So if I just pull the TBT bond, uh, you can see there's some gaps on this chart. It's just the inverse more or less, but there's gaps because... Um, there's overnight trading, it's a futures, so the ETF here only catches regular trading hours. But in short, this is the same pattern here. You got the uh, little mini head and shoulders starting to form. We've got a neckline here, and if we get a break of that, a simple measured move would be from uh, 23.50, you could say to 26.50. So you get a $3 move, which is one, two, three, which brings us up to more or less this area, which will bring us into the 50 period moving average and uh, it'll be a pretty good retracement but we could actually see it go quite a bit higher in the long run um, but right now this is kind of what I'm looking for first target and we may be taking a long position in TBT today now take a quick look at the SP 500 intraday chart this is a 10 minute chart condensed down so we can see actually a couple of weeks here of trading action and we saw the market put in a, a bottom back here we had a nice run up. It continued to bounce its head out the 1200 level. Couldn't break through the 1200 level on the SP, which is a pretty major um, mental area for a lot of people to put in to either go short uh, or to short the market. And eventually it broke down. And we we're working our way back up. We did get this mini gap fill here last week. We had this big gap down. It eventually came right back up. As soon as we got that gap fill, big seller stepped in and pretty much crushed the market again, pushed it right back down uh, near the lows. And then on Friday, we had Bernanke come out and um, more or less didn't have any QE easing, but he said uh, they're going to do what they need to do uh, down the road, and they'll be talking about it in September. So although they didn't do anything um, to help really boost the market, the fact that they said they're there willing to do it, um, we saw equities have a nice run into the close, trading up near the high. And uh, I think traders are seeing that as pretty bullish because they uh, feel as though the Fed is there to protect the stock market. So this morning we're actually trading up even higher. We're trading up at 11.88. So if we just zoom in on this chart, 11.88, we're trading somewhere up here this morning. And um, probably going to take another run at the 1200 level. The only problem here is that the market is somewhat overbought. The NYSE is overbought. Um, and we've seen a very strong move on Friday to the upside. And we're going to see the market gap open, possibly up a percent this morning. And then it could extend. So we're going to be overbought on a short-term basis, running right up into resistance, the 1,200 area, which is where we hit before. I wouldn't be surprised if we see um, equities pull back to where the market closed this morning. So if I was to just zoom in a little bit here, you can see... If we get a gap this morning, which we are trading um, right up here at uh, almost 1190, this is where the market closed. So we're going to have this gap. And a lot of times now the market is overbought. So we could see a run up to the 1200 area, tag it, see sellers step in. And then we could actually see the, uh, the market pull back down, fill this gap, consolidate for a bit, and then possibly take another run at the 1200 and break through. So that's kind of what we're looking for and what uh, I've got my eye on uh, going forward. If we just quickly pull up the futures chart, you can see where it's trading this morning in pre-market. Let me just, uh, this is this morning, this is Friday's trading session. This is a 24-hour chart of futures. So the high volume here, this is uh, Friday's regular trading hours, 9.30 to 4. And in futures trading, you can see we've had the price uh, run up to 11.88. It did break 11.90 uh, uh, a little while ago, but um, it's just still trending sideways. 
overall, I'm not a big fan of big gaps to the upside in, in an up market. Usually they get sold into a little bit. And uh, we'll probably see a gap fill this week, if not possibly today. So that's kind of where I stand right now. Anyways, that's it for now. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Bye-bye.